Now we can use our cell phones to place orders through apps at lightning speed, and chatbots can mimic human responses. Well, client experience in a, in a digital age is all about technology. And yet, the human sitting behind this experience is often forgotten. So, to explore the significance of the human experience and how organizations can use the human factor in creating long-lasting relationships, we're joined by Alexis Meissner, who's head of banks and broker-dealers at HSBC Securities Services. Welcome to Cybus TV. Thank you. Alexis, how do you view technology? So, that's really on two planes, right? It's how I view technology as uh, an individual operating in society and in today's world. I mean, obviously, I view it as a tool to help me get things done, to make my life easier, to move things faster, stay connected with family and friends. I live here in London, um, family and friends largely back in the United States, so very easy to, to leverage technology for, for closeness. Um, in my professional life, um, I'm a bit of a Luddite, actually. I, I still prefer pen and paper. Um, I, I print things to, to read things. I know, I know. <laughs> but actually, I think it really colors the way that I view technology professionally as well and gives me a different perspective in the sense that I know and understand that technology is an incredibly powerful strategic advantage for all firms and clients today. I think largely based on our personal experiences with technology, expect that same kind of fast-paced movement through technology in the workforce as well. Um, but I am a real adherent to um, the, the real belief that behind the scenes there is this human being who's moving that machine, operating that machine, and somebody who needs to understand what the person on the other side really wants that technology to do in order to use it to be successful for the outcome that we're looking for. So probably a little different than some of the other folks you've heard it here at Cybos <laughs> in terms of views around well, technology. It's very refreshing to find out that I'm not the only Luddite on the block. So <laughs> thank you for that reassurance. I'm, it's, I'm, yeah, I'm a beautifully happy Luddite, actually. I think it's, in many ways, um, it, it unencumbers as well because I feel technology can be quite overwhelming mm -hmm. today. It can be, you know, um, the, even the addiction that I feel as somebody who's not really a heavy, a heavy technology user to grab that iPhone, to check what's happening, to make sure I didn't miss something. Um, it's quite overwhelming. And even in my personal life, I've made a real concerted effort to kind of leave the technology behind and make sure that I'm enjoying life and experiencing the life moments around me. So how about the industry itself? Uh, do you feel there's been a, a, a shift in recent years in how tech is being used in the banking, uh, banking sector? Yeah, I mean, look, Financial services has always been based on technology. I mean, in, in the recent times, um, there's a foundation of technology um, that we all have to use for our systems to move um, and to do the things that we need to do for our clients. So that's always been there, at least as long as I've been in financial services, which is about 25 years now. Um, but the, I think what's really changing is, again, drawing back to that very personal experience of how we use technology in our own lives, our day-to-day -day lives, that expectation that those things will be available to us inside of a working culture or as a client trying to pull things from with immediacy and accuracy from um, the, the providers that they use in financial services. So I think that demand um, around how technology is used and how bespoke that technology is to each client's need is really what's changing very quickly around us. Mm. So what are the challenges you're facing at the moment uh, in implementing the right tech solutions for your clients? Um, you know, so I'm not, again, not a technologist, right? So I'm not going to uh, go through all of the uh, implementation or execution challenges. Those are real. Um, but I, I think what we're finding more and more is really getting to the heart of the problem statement with our clients. What I, I think they, we and they know they need technology. We know they want technology. But do we know what we want the technology to solve? Mm -hmm. Do we know what the technology is going to solution? Um, and are we willing to start small enough um, in, a, in a pretty narrow lane to make sure that technology really works and maybe fail a few times before we get to a solution that's replicable across multiple problem sets. Um, and I, I, you know, I think that's really the heart of what we're trying to do inside of our organization is to really get inside of what is the problem statement that we're trying to solve um, and make that a very crafted exercise against client needs rather than rolling out massive API suites and saying, mm. take your pick. Um, and hoping to God that um, it gets used <laughs> and, and that the investment was worth what we put into it. Sure. But would you say that the relationship with clients has changed as technology itself has advanced? Uh, you know, not from my perspective. I, I honestly believe, um, it, and deep in my heart, this is a core belief, um, that nothing beats a face-to-face -face conversation, nothing beats a telephone call, nothing beats... Um, 
you know, learning and understanding the motivators that your clients have. Um, you know, I think once upon a time in the industry, it was, it was enough to know people on a quite personal level. Um, one thing that I do see changing is clients really demand that we know them on a holistic level. So yes, I know your name, maybe I know where you live, maybe we know what kind of restaurants we like to go to together, but do I understand your business? Do I understand your clients? Do I understand what your clients are demanding of you, which then has influence on what you need from me? Um, am I being smart and strategic and thoughtful about what your business is? And that I, I have found has really, really started to shift in the industry. Um, and you can only get there through conversation, right? I mean, yeah, you could use the World Wide Web to find some information about a client, but you really underst un understand what they want to do and what they need to do. And now I mean very individually, right? What drives you every day? What does success look like for you? Um, what are the pressures that you're facing? What gives you anxiety? What makes you feel successful? What makes you feel confident? And that part of the client equation, I, I, I think, is really critical. That's my job. Mm -hmm. My job is to make other people successful in what they're doing. So conversation, understanding, dialogue, is that what defines a good client relationship, in your opinion? Trust, confidence, um, the ability to make a commitment and follow through, so delivering. Mm -hmm. um, but it starts with the conversation. It starts with the human interaction. And, and given the volume of technology that's used in financial services, because it's, it's completely changed the landscape in which mm. you're operating, would you say that technology is king in the 21st century, or is it yeah. aspiring to be the absolute king, but not quite yet? So I'm smiling um, because I, I gave a spotlight uh, speech yesterday on this topic, and I, I think I know intellectually technology is king. I really do. I mean from everything from my smartphone to the refrigerator that you know I just press some buttons and things happen to the way my stove works to what my children are doing right there are this whole other generation of of things that can't believe you can't touch it to make it move right <laughs> so um i think intellectually i understand that but emotionally and in my heart i still believe that it's it's human relationships mm -hmm. that that dominate and and should really trump the technology um, because technology is really useless if it doesn't have the right application, the right use case, um, and if it's not ultimately getting you where you want to be. Um, and I, you know, I have yet to meet a machine um, that really knows where I want to be mm. or what I need to do or how I want to get there. I'm sure they're coming. Um, <laughs> not just for the yet, though. <laughs> for the time being, I, I still think it comes down to human relationships. Course. This word human uh, seems to um, uh, come up again. You refer to in your speech the human experience. Could you could you elaborate on that a little bit further? Yeah, um, for me, human, it, it's pretty literal, right? There, are the two of you, and there's me, and we're sitting across from the table, across the table from one another, and we're having a conversation. And to me, that's the, that's the human element, right? We're skin, we're bones, we're hearts, we're minds. Um, we're listening to each other. We're 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 having a dialogue. That's human, right? And to to be human is to feel. To, to be human is to have emotions, to be human is to have motivators and desires, um, things that disappoint you, things that frustrate you. Um, that's really human, right? And it, again, I'm sure there are robots who are learning to, to have those things, but I've not met one yet. <laughs> um, so it, it, to me, this is still very fundamentally human. Because it, it is something, the human experience, which often gets left out of the technology conversation. And I guess like that, that's really what I'm getting at here. What inspired you to speak about this? Is, is it something that perhaps we need to talk about, we need to face up to, because there is that danger that it, it will be lost beyond reach because the, the pendulum perhaps has swung too far in one direction? Yeah, I mean, so what inspired me um, to, uh, to really dig deep in this topic is a deep held belief and conviction um, that human relationships are the driving force in successful business partnerships. You know, I, and if you take a step out of business for a moment, you think about your, your deepest friendships, your closest relationships with family, family members, um, the, you know, the way that you feel impacted by somebody, even if it's a stranger, the, that, that emotive feeling, I still think that's very real and very palpable. You know, the, the highest compliment that me and my, my global team can get from a client is when they tell our managers, our bosses, that we made an impact. And I've never once heard them say, your system made an impact. Your technology made an impact. It's always about your people. Your people really made an impact. Mm. They made a difference. They made a material difference in my ability to be successful. And that's why I've been playing with the topic quite a bit because 
I do get a bit worried, um, you know, the, for sure, the our, our industry in particular is absolutely driving towards and is in many cases already a very high tech environment. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the big dangers I see is that um, we start building things that we think are important or that we believe or have conviction around in terms of technological capability, but does it really, does it really match up against what our customers are asking us to do? And the only way you can know that is if you have that connection and that relationship and that trust with them. Because sometimes you're going to mess up, right? There's failure in all of this. Um, and we, you know, we really want to keep that dialogue open and fresh and yeah. constant. Um, so there's space to make mistakes. Yeah, and, and it's not a conversation in isolation. That's absolutely. the point, because there are others who, who share the same concerns as yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's what inspired me on the topic. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sure I'm not the only banker in this industry <laughs> <laughs> that, that thinks this way, but I think the conversation is, um, you know, the noise around is getting louder and louder. Um, you know, and that's absolutely evidenced by the fact that it's one of the core topics for Cybos this year. Excellent. Well, I think I can speak for myself and Juliet that we've enjoyed this very human conversation ourselves. Yeah. Thank you for sharing a very interesting Thank you. topic. Uh, Alexis uh, Meissner, uh, who's head of banks and broker deals at HSBC Securities Services. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Cybos 2019. Thank you.